how to create a weird abstract design such as this in Affinity Photo, PC or Mac. Sort of weird HP Lovecraft, sort of fantasy, unusual rippled image. Probably virtually impossible to describe exactly. Well, what you need to do is remove all this. And I'm just going to create an ellipse. So ellipse tool. Now I would suggest go up here before you create that, just click here, change the color and go and select the color you want. So I'm going to go with green. So just apply that. Just a solid color to start with. And you can resize it, of course, in any way you want. But then what you can do, you can go to the grain tool. So go to the grain tool. And then with this fill solid, simply just drag across. And you'll notice it changes to linear. So now you've got this linear gradient. You can, of course, create all kinds of different gradients. You could fill it with reds, blues, greens, etc. But I'm going to go for just a black there and green there. And you can, of course, reposition it make it as faint there, but I'm just, I want some shadow there. So make it dark there and you've got the green. With that, go to the move tool. Now with the move tool selected, press return or enter on the keyboard and this panel will appear. And you can go here and you can set the rotation. So let's just go for rotation, just rotate it. Also duplicate, number of copies. I'm gonna go for, uh, let's just take, make that say six or seven. So seven, maybe eight. Something like that, eight, no, 10 actually now, and 16 there, so let's just go one more. Yeah, 17. So I've got this design. With this design, now click OK. What that does, creates loads and loads of layers. Loads of layers, which you can then select and use. So let's just select all of them. Make certain that top one selected, hold down the shift, click the bottom one, all selected. Now right click, and you can group. The reason for grouping, I want to rasterize it now. If I rasterized it without grouping it, you just get obviously loads and loads of raster layers. So got that as a group, right click again and go down to rasterize. So rasterize all turned into a single pixel layer. Now I can manipulate this. I could use this design as a pattern, but I want to distort it a bit before I use this. So I'm going to go to filters and distort and deform. And with that, this panel appears. I'm going with rigid and then I'm just going to quickly go around here and add a fair number of pins. These pins or handles, what do you want to call them? All the way around. And then you can simply click one and drag. Click another one, you can see it's highlighted there and drag. Click another one, drag, and maybe add one in the middle there, you can drag, and so on. You can create all kinds of weird and wonderful shapes using this simple approach, just simply by dragging this out you can pull them away, you sort of drag it completely away if you want. And continue there, another one there, and so on. And you could create all kinds of unique looking shapes very simply using this approach. Click apply. And what you can also do, quite like to do, just make it a bit smaller. And again, filters, repeat, deform. And then you can see, you can get that. And you might want to apply some transforms. If you do that, if you go to filters, repeat, deform, sometimes you might find it's quite slow. So I wouldn't, don't always do that, but I've got that. I'm happy with that now. What I want to now do is I want to turn this into a pattern layer. So layer and new pattern layer from selection. It's selected, it's a pixel layer, it can be turned into a pattern layer. And you can see now you've got your pattern layer. And you can see then you can resize it, move it around, it's a very weird sort of like HP Lovecrafting oddball shape, but it could be any kind of shape and design. Well, what you can now do is, I'm just going to slightly resize that there. Don't want to push it too far, but again, do exactly the same as before. Press return or enter on the keyboard. Makes it the move tool selected. Comes up here, move and du duplicate. Then go here to rotation. You can just rotate it slightly. Also duplicates. Maybe let's go for 10 or something like that. 10 there, and you can see the result there. Well, what you can also do is scale. So just increase it slightly. Don't have to go too far. You might go that way. And all kinds of different designs can be created simply by number of copies, rotations. But also, if you're not happy with it, you can always simply resize this one, maybe rotate it and all those sort of things. And then again, do exactly the same. Just try it again. And then rotation, duplicate, and scale again. And number of copies, 
Now you can push it too far and you can see what happens. You hit, oh, 35, didn't want to go that low. You can see you can create literally thousands of different designs just by simply rotation, number of copies, like that. Just keep trying, experimenting with it, something like that. Or maybe go for scale a bit bigger than that, 87. All it does is create lots of layers, which you can then remove if you want afterwards as well. And of course, you can also, if you want, just use horizontal. You might decide, you know what, I want that move slightly or vertical, just like different change of position, create different designs and then click OK. So you've got that sort of design. And of course, literally infinite combinations can be created. And you can always select a pattern and you can always then decide, you know what, I want that one bigger. I want that one bigger. Move them around, reposition them. You don't have to keep them exactly the same position. So they can always be resized and repositioned. All kinds of weird sort of like, virtually alien jungle-like scenes. I think this would be a best way to describe it but certainly a very odd abstract design. And of course, once you've created it, once you're happy with the design, once you feel that it's filled everything, or it doesn't have to, you can always have some gaps through there which you can then apply effects to. You can select all of them and then go to layer and maybe try it merge selected. Sometimes the result doesn't look great. Personally, generally I always go, in this case, merge visible because sometimes combination doesn't actually end up looking anything remotely like this. And there you have it, pixel layer. And you can then, of course, select all these others and just delete them if you don't want them anymore. So you've got your lovely abstract design very quickly in Affinity Photo. And of course, I've gone for green, green and black, but you don't have to. You could go with ones that are like made up of three or four, five different colors in that gradient. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Bye.